Okay. Whoa! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2, and this is a video in 2017. Uh, and this video is going to be dedicated to uh, the user Tiago Bittencourt Trevisan. If I said that right, I don't think that's been your name forever. I remember it being something different, but he has said, please play Universe Sandbox 2 on so many of my videos. Although I don't think I've been seeing you a lot lately. I think he finally gave up, which is kind of sad because now I'm playing it and he may not even be around here to... Uh, to watch the video. Maybe he unsubscribed. I hope you didn't unsubscribe. Don't use him as an example. This is a simulation for that interstellar object that was coming into our solar system. I think it was the cigar-shaped thing. Is this it right here? The asteroid was named Oumuamua. 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 Is that, is that seriously the name of it? Oumuamua. I think it's a Hawaiian name. Oumuamua meaning a messenger from afar arriving first, because it is the first interstellar object ever observed in our solar system. This means it is the first known object to have left another star system and entered ours. After slingshotting around the sun, Oumuamua is now on, on course for leaving our solar system and enter interstellar space once again. Researchers have been hurrying to study it before it is gone forever in hopes of learning more about where it came from. Asteroids are formed in the early stages of a solar system, so studying this object can reveal the story of a distant system born long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, there's Oumuamua. It is flying on a trajectory like this, and it's going to get close to the sun, and then it's going to fly out. What is the time frame here? This is four days per second? Wow! Okay, now note the speed of the Earth. And the speed of this, this thing got extremely close to our planet. Holy crap. Imagine if that's how the Earth went. It's not even a, an asteroid in our solar system. It's an asteroid from deep space, in interstellar space. And it just happens to hit the Earth on that exact trajectory. I mean, what are the odds of that? They have to be aliens. If this is what I'm thinking of, I'm, th I'm pretty sure the interstellar object, they said it was cigar shaped. It was a, it was a long, elongated rock. It looked like a floating turd in space. I'm going to try and actually ram this into Earth. I'm going to destroy planet Earth with this asteroid. <laughs> I slowed this down so that way I can catch this on a good day, really close to our sun. It's actually extremely close to our sun right now, and it is traveling on this current trajectory. So if I face from this direction, this is facing the complete opposite way that it is traveling. So let's try and put use a big force on this. So. The equivalent mass of 10 suns. Let's actually get out of this. That way I can see the velocity. Motion. Okay, it's going at 77 kilometers per second because it's really close to the sun. So let's just use a force on this. How much is the mass of the Milky Way versus the sun? Probably a, probably a huge difference. Uh, click. That did a lot. Okay, where did that go? Jupiter has left the building. Where's the... Where is Oumuamua? We completely lost Ubamwa. Somehow I ended up losing Jupiter. Let's just destroy the sun real quick. There we go. There goes the sun. There goes the solar system. Let's try that again. Okay, slow this down. Slow this down. Okay, how about this? We're going to take our edit tool. Uh, yeah, edit. And since this thing is already moving, why don't we just casually... Can I select this? Just casually move you. Maybe I just need to be a little bit more down right here, maybe a little bit right here. That way the earth can move right in the, right in its path. Ooh, let's see if this gets a little bit closer. I can always just move it back. So let's just zoom in on this asteroid. Okay, so Oumuamua is about to collide into planet earth. And I actually think it's totally going to miss. Uh, so let's go back into edit mode. <laughs> oh God. Okay, now we're gonna strike China. And don't fizzle out, don't fizzle out, don't fizzle out. Boom! Okay, that was actually a pretty sizable crater and it creates a huge shockwave right there. So if our, if a tiny little asteroid like that hit our planet, that would be the result. It would be a crater the size of probably North Korea. Maybe a little bit bigger than North Korea. I think that's, that's North Korea right there is about Maybe that's a bit bigger than that. Maybe all of Korea. I got an idea. It's a little bit of a strange experiment, but I think it's an idea. That's all it is. It's just an idea. Okay, so we're going to place one Uranus right here and one Uranus right... Uh, I think that's the dot. One right about here. Okay, they're pretty equidistant apart. But... 
would like them to be so equidistant that nothing will happen. That Earth will just sit there sitting in the center, but this will only work if I have the numbers correct. Basically, basically what I'm getting at with this experiment is that I want to wedge the entire planet between two Uranuses. Two of them. Count them. Two. Two of them just smushed right up against your face. That's what we're doing today. But they'll be close. They'll be so close that nothing will actually happen. Actually, that's actually a pretty cool eclipse we have going on there. That's like a Earth Uranus eclipse. Actually, that's a really good picture right there. Look at that. that could be a, can I get rid of like all the names? Let's hold on here. This is like wallpaper worthy. Edit. That's a good wallpaper right there. <laughs> we got the Earth eclipse. We have one Uranus blocking uh, the Earth, and then you have the Earth blocking Uranus. That's awesome. Okay, anyways, what was I trying to do? I want to get uh, the Earth to be stuck in between both the Uranuses. Okay, so where's this Earth going? This Earth, it is starting to move away. Although it didn't go towards any. Okay, it, went, it favored this one. Wow. And then that Uranus goes off course, and then they just turns into one super Uranus. I want to try and get this perfect. So this is at, okay, so this is minus 100,204 kilometers. So we'll all make this at exactly minus 100,000 kilometers. This one will be at exactly 100,000 kilometers. And then what we'll do, so they're exactly what this one is at negative 100,000 kilometers and this one is at 100,000 kilometers. So what we need to do is we need to place uh, an earth at exactly position zero. Let's just set Earth at exactly zero. Uh, so we'll put that, set that to zero, and we'll set this to zero. Okay, this should be perfect. Oh, I'm hoping this works. The only thing I, I feel like that can mess things up here is if uh, it's it, it's their spins. So if this doesn't work, I'm going to adjust their spins, and I hope nothing messes up here. Oh my God. Oh no, are they getting closer? Are they getting closer? They're getting closer. They're totally getting closer. What's going on here? But nothing is getting affected here. The Uranuses are just getting closer and closer together, I think. How long before something inevitably messes up? Oh, this is beautiful. This is, <laughs> this is actually working. They're heating up. I wonder if we'll end up tearing apart planet Earth. Holy crap, I wanna get rid of all the trails. I'm gonna pause this. This is actually cool, this actually works. I thought the game would, there would be like some slight imperfection that will end up pulling the Earth towards one of the Uranuses, but nothing is happening. Actually, now that they're on fire right here, maybe one of them will lose mass quicker than the other, and then that will cause a change in mass with the Uranus, which will cause one of them to have a weaker spin, and then, Earth will eventually get pulled in by uh, one of the other Uranuses. Uh, but let's take off the trails and the labels because I want to see this in its full glory. Here we go. That is pretty awesome. Earth is actually starting to burn up now. That's awesome! That is so badass! It's like we we made something beautiful. We actually made something beautiful for once. Beautiful for once. I feel proud. <laughs> oh! It happened. It happened. One of the Uranus is, uh, I think this one it probably has less mass now because it started getting more hot for some reason. So that was probably uh, the spins of the planets. Uh, I don't know why that one in particular got picked. The game isn't perfect, but let's see what happens if we get rid of their spins. Actually, here's what, here's what we're going to do. We are going to tidally lock everything. So these two Uranuses are tidally locked with each other. They're gonna get closer and closer and closer. I, re I really like how the Earth is like pulling them together. That must be the gravity of the Earth that results in them coming together so it starts oscillating. But this should be relatively even now. They're just sitting still and they're tidally locked with each other. But I could be wrong. Let's see how long this lasts. Actually, is this causing the, the Earth's water to oscillate as well? It's actually creating uh, seasons on planet Earth. This can last. Oh, whoa, oh, yep, yep. They start withering away. That's when the masses change. That's so cool. And now it's just sling. <laughs> That's funny. They're still kind of tidally locked to each other. So it looks like this, uh, this Uranus right here is just swinging this one around like crazy. I want to do that with black holes. 
Okay. All right. We'll set up our sun experiment. I'm just gonna make sure this stuff works. All right. They should just circle each other. Good. And then now all we have to do now is just stick something right in the center. And then we have our Christmas lights. First off, we're gonna have planet Earth just sitting still right in the center. Zero, zero, zero. Sitting right there, smack dab in the center. The suns should just be moving. So here is our beautiful experiment about to happen. Let's do, let's do like 21 minutes per second. Okay, actually no, let's do this a little bit faster. Okay, will the suns get closer and burn up the earth? That is the question. And I'm really not sure if they will. They might just, it looks like they're just gonna spin in circles, but the earth isn't going towards one or the other. So this is what it would be like living in constant daylight and also having the sun uh, this close to the planet. Woohoo! Whoa, actually, something did happen here. What happened? It started orbiting one of them? Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what happened. It started losing mass, uh, but it was ejecting mass, which caused it to start moving in one particular direction. Let's see what happens when we have something in formation like this. Let's just go ahead and save this. Uh, save simulation. Sun 2, go. Will they just dance? No, they will not. <laughs> they will supernova. Everything's gonna burn. Okay, here we go. Everything seems like it's dancing in the correct direction, but where will the anon it quickly falls apart? But maybe something amazing will happen. Wow. All right, I said I wanted to do this with black holes, so we're doing this with a black hole. We're going to have a black hole dead in the center between these two suns, and nothing should happen. This black hole is also the mass of one sun, so it actually should have a pretty interesting uh, effect on both of these. Woo! Oh, that was cool. And I'm so glad I saved that. Let's reload that. And make it super close. There we go. That's where it starts getting ripped to shreds. Wow. Okay, let me uh let me just slow that down. I want to see that in slow motion. That is insane. Let's just get let's get into this. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That was an unintended effect. But that is beautiful. Crap, bro. I'll play this one more time, but without the labels. Wow. Okay, where's that black hole at? I can't even see the black hole. There it is. You can't even see the effects on this for some reason. Oh, there we go. Everything's just getting all messed up. There's just like radiation everywhere. <laughs> but that's insane. I feel like I made some art. Actually, I wonder if it'll come back around. Let's just, uh, I can't see the trail, so I don't really know what's gonna happen after this. Actually, I think they, uh, they're just gonna fly off into space, I'm pretty sure, right? Will they come back? I, I, I like how this, uh, oh wait, they're coming back, they're coming back! Oh, okay, that one for some reason got sucked up, but it's probably because of all the particles from the sun flinging around this that's causing forces to change and blah, 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 blah. But okay, okay. I think that about does it for this episode. I'm just happy I got that down because I remember there was a really early episode of Universe Sandbox like from 2015 where I was trying to get like some trinary uh, sun system, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that. So let's do it. So here's what we're going to try. Uh, I'm looking at a model online of how I want this to move and I I'll play it here. The star in the middle is going to orbit the one on the left first and then at some point they'll become aligned again in a straight line and then the middle star will transfer to the second one and then it'll keep transferring i don't i don't, I don't know how to go about like the velocity for the first star i'm just gonna keep trying a bunch of ideas and we'll see if they stick uh, i'll try a standard orbit the velocity of this is going to be going around here so hopefully hopefully it's going in this direction and then everything will work out perfectly but i will save this just in case things do not work out perfectly this is not going according to plan <laughs> things should work out now this star right here needs to be going in retrograde uh so what if we made this minus 57.4 in the complete opposite direction everything gonna mess up these are just gonna all collapse into each other and make some heart shape. I probably have the wrong angle here. Uh, yeah, if I f if I fire this at a higher angle, it might it might have had a chance. 
That could have worked. Let's try that again. Maybe, maybe at a maybe at a 60 degree angle. Okay. Pull it that way. Okay, maybe maybe uh 1.5. Ah, uh, they're getting too close. There, there's got there's a, some mathematically correct way of doing this, but I don't quite know how to do it. So, uh, I may have to do a follow up with this because now that I now that I I've realized now that I've figured out that you can actually just edit the positions of everything like to be exact. If you can get these cool balancing. Uh, tricks here so this leaves the opportunity for you guys to give me any suggestions for some follow-up video to this uh, because I, I do want to try and do something where we're doing some crazy balancing acts where we're not going to disrupt the overall balance of gravity where everything will go into uh, chaos I want I want to make something crazy uh, but uh, maybe if any anyone can shed some light on how I can get like this perfect uh, I think it's tertiary system. Is it tertiary? Whatever three is. It's not trinary. Uh, whatever three is. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to leave it there because it's getting really late. I've been, I've been actually trying this for like another hour. <laughs> and I just couldn't do it. So I'm giving up here. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys later. Oh, 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 please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Can we come back down? Okay. All right. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah.